Hello friends. In this video, we are going to study about the technique signal flow graph, which is used to represent the control systems. So let's start with our topic. In our earlier videos, we have studied the block diagram technique for representing the control systems. In the block diagram technique, it involves a number of blocks and feedback blocks are also involved in it. So the representation of a control system using the block diagram technique, it is very complex and it is very confusing. So there is another technique called the signal flow graph technique, which is used to represent the control systems. In the signal flow graph technique, it is a representation of a set of equations. If we apply the Laplace transform on the transfer function, we will obtain the differential equations. Okay, so those equations, they can be represented using the signal flow graph technique. So we can say that a signal flow graph is represented by a set of equations. If we take an example, we have a simple block diagram in which the input is XS and output is YS and the transfer function is GS. So this is the block diagram, a very basic block diagram of a system in which the input is XS and output is YS. Now, if we represent this system by the signal flow graph, then we have So this is the signal flow graph representation of this system. In this, we have two nodes. One node is for the input, which is named as X, and another node is for the output, which is named as Y. And between these two nodes, we have a branch on which we have a arrow, which is showing the flow of signal, that is the direction of the arrow. It is showing that the signal is flowing from the X node to the y node so the nodes are connected by the branch and on the branch we have the arrows which indicates the direction of flow of signal so we can say that a signal flow graph it is the representation of the system in which the flow of signal is represented okay so this type of representation it is called the signal flow graph technique and in this signal flows from one node to another node Now, let us study some of the terms which are commonly used in the signal flow graph technique. So, let's see the basic terminology we can say of the signal flow graph. The first term which we have introduced in this signal flow graph, it is the node. So, what is a node? A node in the signal flow graph, it is a point which is used to represent either a summing point, a takeoff point or any variable. So when we are converting a block diagram into a signal flow 
graph so we can replace the summing points the takeoff points and any of the variables by the node okay so node is a point which is used to represent summing point takeoff point and any of the variables second term we have is input node now input node will be a point where all the signals are uh, going out of it okay or we can say that the input node it is the source of outgoing branches so if this is a node then it will have all the outgoing branches from it so this node will be called an input node then we have the output node so output node will have all the incoming branches towards it also known as sync node and receive incoming signals if we take an example if this is a node then all the branches will be towards it so this will be an output node it is receiving incoming signals or branches also known as the sync node then we have mixed node so mixed node it is a combination of both input node and output node if we represent it suppose it's a node so it is having incoming branches also and outgoing branches also so this node will be called a mixed node next we have term as loop so loop is a closed path closed path which starts from a node and terminates at the same node and the loop will goes in the direction of flow of the signal that is in the direction of the arrow so if we take an example this is a node x1 we have another node x2 so these we have two nodes x1 and x2 the loop is starting from this x1 node that is going in the direction of flow of the signal that is in the direction of the arrows in this way so starting from x1 and terminating at x1 so this will be a loop let's take another example now in this case we have in if it goes in the direction of flow of the signal then starting from x1 g1 g2 this is not the direction of the arrow so uh, the signal will go again in uh, forward direction so this is not called a loop because we have to move in the direction of flow of signal or in the direction of the arrows so this is a loop and this is not a loop then we have non touching loops non touching loops are those loops which don't have any node in common between them let's take an example
Now in these two examples, let us consider this first case. In this case, these two loops are there starting from x1 to this node, then again terminating at x1. This is starting from this node, going to x2 and terminating at this node. So these two loops, they have one common node here. So these are called touching loops. If the loops don't have any common node between them, then those loops are called the non-touching loops. So this will be the example of touching loops and it is an example of non-touching loops. So we can say that non-touching loops are those loops which don't have any common node in between them. Now the next term we have is the forward path. It is a path which originates from an input node and terminates at an output node. Also, when it is traversing from at this path that is starting from input node and terminating at the output node, no node has to be encountered twice. That is, uh, it is not going to cross any of the node two times. So forward path, we can say that a simple forward path will be like this. It is a starting from the input node and terminating at the output node and no node is uh, crossed uh, twice. More than once, no node has been crossed by this path. If we take another example like x1, x2, it is going this way. So if we see this x1, x2, x3 and this is not the direction of flow of the signal. So the signal will flow from x1, x2, x3 and x4. So this will be the forward path. Also x1, x2, x3 and x4 this can be the forward path. This is not the path. This is will be a loop. Okay. So these are the terms which are going to be used when we are uh, studying this technique signal flow graph. Now, next we will study some of the rules which are related to the signal flow graph. First rule is the addition rule. The addition rule says that if we have suppose an example here. Now these are the four branches from these four nodes x1, x2, x3 and x4. These are the input nodes and this is the output node. All the branches are coming towards it so it will be a summing point. So if we take the output here, so x will be equal to this path gain. Path gain it is the gain of this branch okay. So a11 has to be multiplied with this input. So a11 multiplied with the input x1 plus a12 multiplied with x2 plus a13 multiplied with x3 plus a14 multiplied with x4. So we can say that the value of the variable which is designated by a node it is equal to the sum of all the signals which are entering to the node multiplied with their gains. Okay. So at this node, the value of this variable will be equal to the algebraic sum of all the, the value of these variables, sum of all the signals multiplied with their path gain. So this was the addition rule. Second rule was series connection. This rule says that if we have this node as x1, then this is x2 and this is x3. This branch has the gain h1 and this branch has the gain h2. So these two branches they are connected in series with it. 
so they can be replaced by a resultant which is starting from x1 ending at x3 and their gains will be multiplied so we will have h1 and h2 so this is the series connection rule now the third rule is the transmission rule let's take an example we have this as the output node the branches are coming out to uh, uh, towards from it so we have x1 and x2 here so a11 it is the gain of this branch and a12 it is the gain of this branch so this rule says that the value designated by this node it will be transmitted to this node so we can say that x1 will be equal to a11x and x2 will be equal to a12 x so the value of this variable it is equally transmitted to both these branches it is not like that it will be divided between the two it is equally transmitted and it will be multiplied with the path gain so these are the rules which are used in the signal flow graph so in this video we studied that what is a signal flow graph and uh, what are the terms which are used in the signal flow graph technique and in the last we studied the rules which are related to the signal flow graph technique so i hope that this topic is clear to you thank you